Well, the reason mariachi even started out being so musical was for uh, non-musical reasons. I was making El Mariachi series for the Mexican video market. I thought, oh, I don't want to do the typical action film. Instead of making him like an ex-cop turned vigilante, I'll make him a musician. And I'll call it El Mariachi so he can work with a lot of the very mythical, iconic Mexican imagery. Well, so I made this movie and so then we needed music. And I've been taking guitar and piano and saxophone since I was a kid. Um, but I collaborated with several people for that movie because I made it so quickly. That's why when you look at the music by, there's a whole list, my brother, my cousin, uh, myself, a couple of the friends who had some early MIDI equipment that uh, I was just getting familiar with at the time. And we scored the movie really quickly. In fact, the guitars were recorded in my apartment with a Radio Shack microphone and a little Moran's tape recorder just right there in the bedroom with the mic set pretty close. It was a pretty cheesy setup, but figuring it was going to Mexican video, you know, I didn't have any money to spend. It was a, a really low budget. It was a $7,000 movie, so uh, there was not a lot of money to spend on a music recording. So by the time I got to Desperado, I wanted to continue that sort of more guitar-oriented music and not go orchestral yet. I hadn't gotten into orchestral music. And so I thought the best people to go to was Los Lobos. I brought them on early. I brought them on actually at the script stage. I thought, I want to get them in before I even go shoot to do some pre-records like the song Antonio sings, but also beyond that, just look at the script and start coming up with a musical soundscape type of ideas. What it would sound like, what kind of rhythm, what kind of instruments would it sound like. You know, they always say that you shouldn't make a movie about an artist as the hero because it's a very internal character. And it's true. And that's why you have to use music to tell what the character is thinking or feeling. So I designed Desperado to be something where it was almost as if he was hearing the soundtrack in his head. This was the music he was hearing in his head, even when he would just be walking down the street, which is why, as you see in Desperado, he'll just be walking down the street and the music's blaring because that's, he's a musician and that's what he has in his head. So the, the movie series started off in a, in a comical sense, making him a musician, but it also informed the character and the character of the movies as being extremely musical. And I wasn't really getting into themes at that point. I wanted each scene of the movie to have a different sound. So when a new scene would come up, I would look at it and go, oh, in this scene here, this action scene, I was thinking of sort of a, you know, James Bond, Matador type Spanish thing. So instantly they'd start playing something and that would be it. We'd, we'd work on that and put it together. They recorded many tracks. I would just fill up tracks, take it home, and in Pro Tools, I would cut together the, the actual music tracks based on stuff that we did in the studio. One of my favorite comments, one of my favorite Los Lobos isms that I heard while we were doing the music, I included as a line of dialogue in Once Upon a Time in Mexico because so I thought it was funny. Whenever we'd get stuck uh, composing the music for this, for those scenes, we'd throw in ideas out and they would say, mm, I'm not sure about that. And there'd be a pause. And if the pause was long enough, they would say, should we go eat about it? Yeah, let's go eat about it. And they would go off and they would, and they would eat dinner or eat lunch or whatever meal we had. So I included that line in Once Upon a Time in Mexico because that was our way to get out of a situation was, well, let's just go eat about it and we'll come back and then we'll have the ideas. And it, and it always worked. So when I thought of making Once Upon a Time Mexico, I thought right away it's going to have to be orchestral. And the reason I wanted to do the orchestral score, I just thought it would be important. I had to write a lot of the music actually before I went down to set. I needed pre-records. So in doing that exercise, and I'd already been scoring a little bit on Spy Kids, I was really getting into the orchestral sound and, and into the importance of music with story, especially if it's something that you've written. Because if it's something that you've written now, I've been working on this movie now since the first Mariachi 10 years, it's so much in your head, very much like the characters. And the music's so important to a very internal character like this that I wanted the music and the character to come from the same place. So even though I'm not the best screenwriter, I write the dialogue somehow and write these characters, I thought I should be writing the music as well. Because even though technically it might not be as advanced as someone who's scored a long time, it'll have the right the right feel with the character and it'll feel really married together. It'll feel like it's coming from that same place because it is coming from that same place. So I, I got off on that idea and I ran with it and learned orchestration to be able to do Once Upon a Time in Mexico. So that's how the music evolved from guitars being recorded in a bedroom to full orchestral score being really tied in with the character. And uh, people tend to think that, oh, he just likes to do everything himself. Well, no, that's not it. I, I do all these jobs because it really gets you to a very creative place where it's right, you know, where it's right for me, and right for the project. And um, you go by your creative instincts and you do the work when you're at your creative peak. I mean, it could be four in the morning and you're not waiting for collaborators. You can go, you get the inspiration, you go to your home studio and you start making the music. That's when it's right, when the inspiration is right. You don't have to wait for anybody. Like right now, I wanted to do this interview, but I wasn't inspired to do it earlier. So here it is, four o'clock in the morning, 
And uh, instead of waiting for an interview, I just did this myself. There's nobody even here. Just me recording here and I set up a little light. And uh, I just did this interview just by myself because uh, this is when the inspiration hit. So that's what I try to get out of the movies. Turn it much more into back to where it was like when people painted. You know, you get an idea for a painting and you just start painting on the canvas. That's what I want the music to be like. That's what I want the movies to be like, is to feel that personal again. Because the bigger the movies get, the more personal they have to become. You have to pull them back in. And uh, that's sort of the approach I take. Hope you enjoy this, and uh, talk to you later.